Here we've got the, the fidget spinner um, brushless motor spinning rather nicely at a very low speed. It's probably doing, oh, I don't know, maybe 100 RPM or something like that. And this one is using a different sensor. We used a reed switch on the last video. Now what we're using is a solid state equivalent of a reed switch called a Hall effect sensor. This very small device has been mounted underneath this arm so it sits right above the magnets and the three wires from it come out to a circuit board that takes the pulses from the Hall sensor and runs them into a power transistor to turn the coil on and off. In addition, there's a single NPN transistor uh, 2N2222 that inverts that signal because the, the Hall effect sensors uh, typically go low when they see a magnetic field. We actually need it to go high to turn that transistor on. Uh, here's a uh, prototype of the circuit that I built onto this little circuit board. And as a demonstration, if I take a permanent magnet and bring it close to the Hall effect sensor, which is right here, you see the LEDs go on quite brightly. One important thing to note is if I turn that magnet around so that the opposite magnetic field goes towards it, nothing happens, even if I go right up on top of it. Switch to the other side and it works beautifully. So you may need to flip your sensor over or turn your magnets over if it does not work. Now you'll note that this is spinning, as I said, rather nice and smoothly. It's only taking 2.4 volts to get it to do that. And if I take the power supply here and increase the voltage, let's take it up to 10 volts, you can hear that it's really picked up speed. One thing I do want to caution you about, let me turn the power off for a minute, uh, if you don't glue your magnets onto the uh, ends of the, the, uh, the fidget spinner, if you just let the magnetic fo uh, force hold them onto the bearings, when you get up to high speed, as I did there by feeding 10 volts to it, they can easily fly off and uh, with quite a bit of force, so be careful of that. If you're going to get uh, do some experiments with higher speeds, make sure you either bolt the magnet to the, uh, to the bearings or glue them on securely to keep that from uh, flying off. The last demonstration model is shown here. Again, it's spinning at a rather uh, a low speed, well under 100 RPM. This one uses an optical sensor. You may notice that in the bottom area here, there's a bright white LED shining straight up. And in the arm above that is a phototransistor. This little device here has a clear top to it, and it's facing down. So when it is getting light uh, from the LED, it's off. And when the light is blocked, it's on. I can show you that with a uh, prototype that I built up. Here is the sensor. You can see the LED down here at the bottom. The sensor is up at the top and you can see it bathed in, uh, in light. It does require a small circuit board that contains a power transistor and a few resistors. That's about it. And what I've done here was to replace the coil, which would uh, turn the electromagnet on and off, with an LED. And if I put my finger in here, you can see the LED goes on and off. It goes on when it breaks and it goes off when I come away. So when it goes through there, it's going to turn the electromagnet on. If I take a little fidget spinner here and spin it and run it through there, you can see that LED blinking uh, quite nicely. Uh, the circuit and all of the, uh, the parts and such for that are all on my webpage. And again, we're running at a very low speed, very smooth low speed. And if I increase the voltage here, take that up to 10 or 11 volts. Now you might notice this one's spinning somewhat more slowly than the one with the Hall sensor. That's because I have a much bigger space uh, between the electromagnet and the magnets just to kind of keep this one a little bit, uh, little bit calmer. The other nice thing that you can do with this particular sensor setup is if you have a meter that has a frequency counter on it, you can take the probes from that meter I'm going to do that here. I'm going to take the negative probe and connect it to the negative or the ground of the, uh, the light sensor and take the positive probe and I'm going to pay, put that on the output of the light sensor and I'll put a, uh, a couple stills over the, on this. Right now that's spinning at about 70 Hertz. Now, what does that mean? Well, it means that that light sensor is being interrupted 70 times a second. 
Now, before you say that, oh, that must be 70 RPM, you have to do a little bit of math. It's going to be 70 divided by 3, because there are three lobes on here, and then multiplied by 60 to get revolutions per minute. Or you can just multiply the 70 uh, hertz that we're getting times 20, which would give you about 1400 RPM. So that's really moving along quite well. Uh, again, if your magnets are not bolted, glued, somehow held down, when you get much above this, they're likely to fly off and could pause, cause a bit of a hazard. So be careful when you're working with that.